So I started off by talking about how Manitoba is kind of a small place. I mean, I went from University of Manitoba, I wanted to be a chartered accountant, I decided, so I joined Ernst & Young. I was successful in completing uh, my chartered accountant designation. And at the same time, I had my first daughter when I was in my fourth year of university, and my second daughter just after I finished uh, writing my exams. Uh, so I knew that I didn't necessarily want to stay in public practice, and I, I moved on. I joined Investors Group and spent a couple of years working in the internal audit department at Investors Group, where I learned a ton about what our city has to offer in terms of uh, corporate leadership and, and a company that really is part of the fabric of, of our community. I went on from Red River College to work, or from universe, or Investors Group to work at Red River College and from there to the University of Manitoba. And my work with both of those institutions really leaned heavily on my accounting skills, um, but focused much more on what goes into the numbers. I learned and spent a lot of time looking at the development, the organizational development of the university and college systems, and what the ingredients were really for the outcomes of success uh, for those institutions. And while there, I learned that there are so many Indigenous students that didn't have the same opportunities as I had. So I encouraged, um, I encouraged myself to think about what I, learned, what I knew and understood about my own heritage. And it was from that that I went back and worked on my Master's in Native Studies back at the University of Manitoba. And that's opened great doors for me in terms of uh, opportunities for, for my career development in ways that I would have never imagined at your age. Uh, when I joined IBM Canada, it wasn't because of my technical skills, it was because I understood the history of Indigenous people in our country. And I joined IBM 10 years ago, well before the Government of Canada adopted the Truth and Reconciliation, and long before we acknowledged the United Nations uh, rights of Indigenous peoples. So I'm really proud of that, because that means that IBM recognized the importance of Indigenous inclusion back at, uh, in those early days. I've enjoyed my work with IBM and I realized that uh, it's opened my eyes to the ex an, an international experience. I also want to share with you that uh, in working for a technology company, I also recognize the incredible role that technology will play as we move forward as leaders, both in terms of society as well as in regard to business and also in regard to politics. Technology has made this world a flatter place. We, we see people coming to our communities from all over the world, and you don't have to leave Manitoba to interact and do business globally. So I would uh, share with you, I guess, uh, from my experience, I guess, as not only a student, but a student of life, um, I, would, I would ask you to challenge yourself and to say yes. It, say yes to things like this, like standing up in front of all of you and sharing your story. Uh, say yes to the opportunities that are presented to you. Um, and I think we had read earlier in, in the pledge that um, taking chances is important because you learn a lot even when you fail. And not to look at failure as something that holds you back, but to use it to build your own confidence. Over the summer, I'm a real mo movie bu buff, and uh, I watched a couple of movies that I just want to share with you um, how profoundly they impact me. And I'm hoping that some of you have seen these movies, and if not, I would encourage you to watch it and watch it from a different perspective. One of these movies uh, is called Lion. And in that movie, a young boy becomes lost in India and uh, cannot find his family, he can't find his way home, and becomes uh, a, a ward of the state and is adopted out to a family in Australia. And he struggles with his identity the entire movie. It's absolutely profound to watch him try to grow and adapt and learn within his new environment, yet struggle with the memories that he has of when he was a child, uh, before he was lost. And it was through his, uh, his desire, this passion, this commitment, um, that he continued to search for what it was that he was looking for. And in 1982, with the power of Google Map, he was able to, with his memories, find his hometown and reunite with his parents with his mother and his siblings. And that was pretty powerful to me because it tells you that your identity is rooted deeply in your childhood memories. 
and that as leaders, as you come out and as you make your choices, don't forget to, to, to look within yourself and to find yourself as you move forward in, in the decisions that you make. I know that's made a lot of difference for me. I call it a brand uh, that I didn't realize it, but I was creating a brand, an MJ brand, right? It was about me, it was about my identity. And the more I closely related to my own identity, the more powerful and passionate I became and the more successful I became. Uh, the second movie that I really, really like, and I, I would hope that you would find time to, to watch it because there's some really powerful lessons there for us today. And that's the movie Hidden Figures. And this movie is pretty powerful. It celebrates a woman, her name is Katherine Johnson. She's of African-American descent, and she was a physicist. And back in the day, and it's interesting because IBM's actually um, in that m movie because they uh, purchase a huge IBM system to help do calculations. But prior to having computers to do all these calculations, people did it. And in fact, in this movie, uh, Katherine Johnson was the best computer that NASA had. And it was because of her great work and her calculations that John Glenn was launched into orbit, that the, that the metrics were just precise enough to get him into orbit and to get him home. But what's really important about that movie is that Katherine Johnson and her colleagues were black women who did not have the opportunity as non-black people to be able to use washroom facilities and to be able to work alongside the men who were working so hard to achieve the same goal and outcome of getting John Glenn into orbit. And one of the most powerful scenes in that movie is when her director takes a sledgehammer and knocks down the sign that says only uh, uh, non-black women or only black women allowed in the bathroom, and the signs that prevented black women from using washrooms. Because she used to have to race across campus to be able to use the bathroom and then get back on time to con continue with the calculations that she was working on. And that's just one example. There are many examples in the movie about gender inclusion, about identity, about inclusiveness in general, and understanding one another and where we come from, and thinking of that as a celebration. And the impact that that can have is incredibly powerful. And so I would encourage you as you leave here to think about those messages and think about who you are and have trust in yourself. And reach out, reach out to the mentors, reach out to the business leaders and, and lead yourself, lead others um, as you're making your way through commerce. And I wish you well in your studies. Um, again, thank you for the honor to be here. It's absolutely a privilege to return to the Asper School and to share this message uh, with you, with you students, with all of those that are working at the university to support the success of these students, and to my business colleagues around the room who also work really hard uh, to, to help ensure you have a future when you leave the school. Thank you very much.